Hi there, and welcome to Art from the Cottage. So I've just covered my um, canvas with, um, you know, very dark blues, and I'm just putting in now a bit of uh, burnt amber and a bit of raw amber, raw sienna, into the where the clouds will be. Um, Colours I'm using today are burnt amber, raw amber, raw sienna, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, white, cream, yellow and green. And most of those colours I will be mixing. I'll do my best to tell you what I use. And I'm going to be painting a landscape today. So I'm going to start by putting some texture in the um, at the bottom of the painting and I use an exterior filler paste you can use an interior filler paste you know what decorators use or you can use the an artist texture paste paste it doesn't really matter I found the um, the filler paste that decorators use is brilliant that's really good really well so just put it randomly on the painting and then make some marks in it and little squibbles and things because that's where the grasses are going to be in the foreground. Quite important that you let that dry so I'm going to avoid that area completely till it's dry. Um, it does go rock hard when it's dry. So I'm just putting in um, where I want my uh, tree line to be here and I've just put in with, with any old green it doesn't matter because I'm going to go over it with uh, you know the final the final green and in front of that I'm putting those sort of creamy yellow light yellow um, where the field is going to be it's all quite rough at this stage it's just um, a sketch my initial sketch where I want my clouds where I want my field where I want my grasses and that's all it is at the moment and the colours just give me a you know a good insight into um, where I where I want everything. Starting to put in the under layer of the clouds just to get just really to get the shape it's all about shapes. I just want to see what um, what shapes I'm going to create and how they look on the painting. Remember to leave some of the colour underneath. You don't want to do it uh, too solid. Uh, whatever colour you put on there, it doesn't need to be too solid. So I'm just adding um, some more colour into the field area and I'm just making it patchy. It needs to be a little bit patchy and I'm trying to make it darker and just add layers really. And so I'm putting some more um, cloud into the sky and remembering to leave, um, you know, the darker colours underneath. Don't blur it out completely. Don't obliterate. You're building up layers and layers of colour. And uh, it's looking quite stormy at the moment. But anyway, I'm just adding more colour. More colour. See, I put in some dark there so that I could go over with some light. Wanted a bit of blue and wanted to warm the sky up a little bit. So I would recommend that each layer that you put into the cloud, into the sky, you let it dry completely. 
because if you just keep putting wet on wet, it's going to just create a muddy, horrible mess. Um, so you need to just keep like, working on another part of the painting, as you see that I, I'll be doing. And um, so that's the only thing, really. Don't cover your, pe your layers that you've put on. The idea is to build up layers and don't work into wet paint. So I've started to put in some um, trees in the background in the meadow we're going to create here. And I'm just using really uh, uh, any, any of the browns, you know, the uh, burnt umber, the raw umber. And I, I mix a bit of green with it and a bit of blue with it, believe it or not, and just put it on. Um, and um, just put your fingernails through it and or brush or something, make some twigs and different things and just make it look. And, and then in front of it, you need to put some dark to make it uh, look as if it's going into, you know, to recede into the background. So I'm putting some trees along here. Now, this, these trees I want to be quite light. You can always go over with a bit of a very thin wash of white, or you can get a paper towel, damp it, and just dab it onto, onto the trees. Not sure what I'll do at the moment. I might go over with a little bit of um, very watery white. So I'm putting in some um, conifer trees, you know, like pine trees. I'll just put a couple in, I think, two or three, not sure, along that back, just to change things up. If all the trees were the same, you know, it's, it's nice if you can do a couple of different types of trees. And these are easy to do with your fan brush. So I've just put in, with my finger now, I've just put in uh, an indication of a, a fence line along that back um, hedgerow. I just use my fingers and my fingernail run across it. That's all you need. Uh, I think it looks quite good like that, supple. Always changing the sky, um, trying to just warm up the sky so it's not all cool colours. You know, you've got all the cool colours in that area. So I'm just trying to warm it up a bit. And um, I think it's it probably going to turn out nice. We'll see. So that little bit of warmth in the sky, that little blush in the sky, has really improved the painting, I think. Just, it's just very uh, subtle, but it's there. So I'm just putting a few little highlights in the cloud and making the edges uh, wispy. That's what I'm doing at the moment. Right, now to start on the foreground. So I'm just putting some greens and some uh, browns into the, into the um, texture. And I'm dabbing it in. I'm not painting it in, scraping it. I'm dabbing the whole time because I don't want to destroy the texture. Um, I spent a long time doing it and, and waiting for it to dry more. You know, you don't want to wipe it off again. So dab it in because you don't want the, you know, the, the moisture from the paint to destroy it. So I'm just putting random colours into that texture.
And now I'm just putting in some um, some scratchy marks where I think the, you know where the grass is going to be. Um, I'm just going over that, and then I and then I take a sponge and I use very dilute uh, raw sienna and raw umber, and just barely on the sponge and just dab that in to create some seed heads. in the grasses. So now it started to look like a landscape and I like my landscapes to look like a classic impressionist landscape. In, usually you can tell you can tell it's an English um, landscape, you can tell that I'm English I think by the uh, style. So I'm putting in the um, fence post. I should usually always do in a landscape. Um, I love doing those. I, I think they finish off the, uh, you know, where you've got your grasses and, and, and things. I think a fence post finishes it. So I've just put the remnants of one in and I'll probably go over with them Pencil, yeah, I'm, I'm just putting in some uh, pencil marks there to represent the wire on the fence. So another little tip um, for you, these paintings, when you show that that is the finished thing, that is how you really like it, dissect every, every thing on the painting, every cloud, every tree, and if you're happy with it, um, you need to varnish it because it brings a whole other dimension to the painting. They look absolutely fabulous when they've been um, varnished. Um, they look like an oil painting. And my paintings look like a, an old, you know, um, classic impressionist landscape. So now, so that's a little tip for you. So now you'll see that I'm putting in... Um, I started to draw it in with a pencil, uh, a cow in the field, a Frisian cow, and I just um, used a pencil to do the outline of the cow and uh, then went into the paint. And I've got a fine brush there that I just used to, you know, make an impression of a Frisian cow eating the grass in the meadow. In England. <laughs> so there we are. So I thought I'd put in three cows because you know you don't want to overcrowd the painting. I've got a big painting, a similar painting where I did a, a herd of cows in the field but it was a very large canvas and I you know got, got plenty of space to put them in. So I thought with this one I'll just put three cows in the painting and I've set them to one side. I've not plonked them in the middle, you'll see. They're slightly off to what to the to the right side because I've got um the fence posts and the grasses on the other side to balance it out. So I thought they would look good there. So oh, this is the fiddly bit of the painting. Um, I always find the smaller the item that you're going to put in, um, the more you know time consuming it is, and the more fiddly it is. If you're doing birds, even you know they just to get them to look right, they just need some time spent on them. Um, whereas everything else seems to just come together quickly. Even the trees, you know, the trees come together quickly. But these small things like cows and animals and, you know, birds and things, they, uh, they do take quite a bit of uh, fiddling around with to get them to look right. And I suggest that, you know, if you're not used to doing that kind of thing, like these cows, just practice them on a piece of paper. Practice them and then uh, you'll see where you, you go wrong if you do go wrong. Uh, 
and don't forget any part of the painting you can just paint out um, or, or wipe it out if it's uh, still wet you can wipe it out and just go over it with a bit of background colour and then um, paint it back in again um, and also if you find that the, uh, parts of the painting look a bit too dark say the trees or something like that you can just dab it out with a, a damp paper towel that's the thing to do So here's another little trick that you like. Um, you just scrape into the dry paint with um, a sharp um, palette knife or something. And you just keep scraping into it and um, making it look like you've got more grasses as well. And don't worry if you scrape a bit too much, you can just dab it with a bit of, you know, the dark colour or something like that. And I've just noticed that on that um, cow on the right hand side, um, it's got a blob where it shouldn't have a blob of black. So I will be removing that and I'll just uh, get a little damp cloth and scrape it a little bit or a, something and scrape that flat because it's not right how it's looking. I think I was going to make the um, cow a slightly different shape and I forgot about it. That's the beauty of, of just having a look at it when you've finished it. You know, don't don't assume that you can't change it because you can. And that's what I'll be doing. So I'm just putting a little bit of dark colour um, randomly here and there. Just here and there, just to make it look um, like you've got dark patches of, of earth there. That all helps. Hmm give a bit of interest really in the foreground. And I'm just putting some random dark um, marks into the paint just to make it uh, make that foreground look nice. And um, I'm using a sponge again just to put some seed heads on the um, the grasses that I've just scraped into the paint as well. I just use a very dilute um, raw umber, maybe with a bit of uh, raw sienna in it or something like that. Just get a colour that you like. So we're coming to the end now of the painting and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have a go at it, those painters out there. Um, and you know, some people like to just watch me paint, I think, and um, they get pleasure out of that. And other people, you know, whatever level you're at, you can, you can do these paintings and you can, as I said before, you can leave, you can leave things out if you're a beginner. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it, and um, it would be lovely if you could um, press the like button, you know, the thumbs up button, and it, I'd be delighted if you decided to uh, subscribe to my channel. So with that, I'll say bye for now, and as always, love from Cornwall.